Hi guys, Wilhelm here and today I wanted to show you this crazy game that just happened in the FIDE World Cup between Magnus Carlsen and Andrei Yesipenko. So Magnus Carlsen, the world champion of course, and well Yesipenko is a young Russian player who is now 19, but when he was 18 in his first game against the world champion, he actually beat Magnus and stopped his amazing 110 games without a loss run which also stopped his world record. So, Yesipenko now, a year older, much more wiser, already, you know, has that wisdom from the old age, because, I mean, he's 19 after all, and uh, he's playing Magnus. The first four games were drawn. Magnus wins the fifth game, and this is uh, their sixth game, where Yesipenko has the white pieces, and he has to win in order for the match to continue. This is a rapid game, and Magnus has not lost a single rapid game in the World Cup since 2005. So it's been 16 years. Now let's check out the game. So, yes, Dipenko has to win. He plays e4, and, well, we get an Italian. And not only that, we get a Gioco Pianissimo. So now it's very trendy these days for top GMs to play this line. It's slightly less confrontational to play d3 than if you play d4. You might play d4 in the future, but d3 is a much more positional approach. Okay, we have d6 and, well, both players castle. We have h3, bishop back to b6 to prevent this move b4 from coming with tempo. And now we have knight bd2, knight back to e7. You might reroute your knight to the f4 square. And now a4 c6 so that if a5 were to happen you always have the option of going to c7 and well after d4 breaking in the center knight to g6 bishop back to f1 this might look like a weird move but the idea is you want to liberate the squares for your knight or your pawns we have rook to e8 queen to c2 bishop back to c7 to prevent a5 from coming with tempo b4 gaining some space bishop to e6 bishop b2 a5 b5 bishop to b6 trying to make this c5 move happen and now bishop to a3 trying to prevent this c5 move we have queen to c7 always trying for the same idea and now we have rook a to b1 cb5 bishop takes b5 now rook e to c8 there is a weakness on c3, so Magnus attacks it. d5, the bishop's attacked. Bishop goes back. And now a great move by Yesipenko. The top engine move, and the only move that really gives him a good advantage. Bishop back to f1. This move has the goal of liberating the c4 square for your knight. Also potentially c4, c5. And here, of course, you cannot take this pawn, because after this... Now we have bishop takes d6, this pawn is falling, this bishop is undefended, the position is terrible, so it's not a free pawn. So instead, Magnus plays rook a to b8, and now we have knight to c4 as planned. And while yes, Ipenko's position here is, well, slightly better, because Magnus's pieces are very, very cramped here on the queen side. And while we see as the game develops, they trade a little bit, and yes, Ipenko brings his rook. And after Magnus tries desperately to reactivate his pieces to kick it out, well, Yesipenko brings his other rook. We have queen c7, and now queen to b3, and so Yesipenko is just applying pressure. He could take the a5 pawn, but you don't want to take it too early because you don't want to allow any, you know, queen takes c3 counterplay. So now we have queen to d8, and now queen to a3, putting some more pressure, and now queen to f6, and... Yes, Ipenko decides to cash in on his advantage. He takes on d6. We have takes, takes, and now queen back to e7. Rook to b6, and now look at these great rooks patrolling the 6th rank. And now a very interesting move by Magnus, f6. And what's the point of this move f6? Well, the point is, after queen to a1, guarding this pawn and also getting out of this pin because you couldn't move your rook because of this pin, you would lose your queen. Now Magnus plays the move knight back to h8 and this move f6 allows this move knight to f7. 
and the rook would be trapped. Let's say you just play random move. I'm just going to play random move. Knight to f7, and now the rook is trapped. This is covered by the bishop, and well, you're going to lose your rook. So we have the only move. After knight h8, bishop to b5. Of course, now if you go here, you just lose your bishop, right? So that's terrible. So instead, we have takes, an intermezzo, rook to e6. Queen goes to c5, and now rook takes b5. The queen's under attack. Queen to c4, queen to e1. And well, Magnus tries to reactivate his knight. But Yesipenko just grabs a second pawn. We have queen to c3, Magnus regains one pawn. But after the trade of queens, rook to b5. And what we will see is that Yesipenko has a better position. So Magnus goes after the pawns, but Yesipenko gives up this e4 pawn because it's not very important. If you just, you know, play rook takes, then a6 comes and you're in trouble. You can't take because you lose your rook. So this would be losing for black. So Magnus doesn't take the pawn. Instead, he plays the move rook back to f8, which is a very ugly move. But the idea is that now, if you take on b7, you're actually lost after knight to d8 forking the two rooks. So, we have knight to h4, improving the knight. The knight might be able to come to g6 or to f5. And after knight to d8 attacking the rook, rook to e7, rook to f7 offering a trade of rooks. Check, rook f8, and finally Yesipenko trades. We have f3. Now there is no weakness on e4, and Yesipenko is just up a pawn. He has a better knight. This knight is terrible. It is forced to guard the b7 pawn, and this rook doesn't really have a target. Okay, we have rook back to c7. Now you could move your knight because, well, the rook guards the b7 pawn. We have knight to f5. h5, Magnus tries to create some counterplay. Rook to b6. King to e8, and now g4 by Yesipenko. He recognizes that Magnus doesn't really have any way to make progress on the queen side, so he just improves his position on the king side. hg4, hg4, and now g6 kicking the knight. Knight back to h4, going after the g6 pawn. And here, rook to h7. And Magnus's whole point is that after knight to g6 and king to f7, the knight is trapped. But this is exactly what Yesipenko goes for. Because here he plays the move rook to d6 attacking the knight and this knight has no squares. You cannot go to b7 or to f7 and both of these squares are guarded by the pawn. You cannot even defend the knight with the rook because this is covered by the knight. And after king takes, rook takes and rook to c7, Yesipenko is now in a completely winning rook and pawn endgame because he has a very nice d pawn he also is up a pawn so let's see if he can convert it we have king to f2 and he pushes his d pawn check now magnus puts his rook behind the passed pawn but just d7 and of course the threat is to go uh rook to g8 check and then promote so we have king to f7 now rook to h8 and now it's very nice if you take here which is what was played in the game. After rook to h7, king moves, rook takes, and now we get a completely winning pawn end game after the move g5. fg5, king g4, king to c6. Now not even taking this pawn, but rather king to f5, and after king b5, king takes e5, king takes a5, king to d6, and in this position, Magnus Carlsen resigned the game. And why did he resign? You know, the material is equal. But after b5, and you start pushing the two pawns, you will see that even though black can promote, white has this resource, queen to a8 check. And now the king has to step on the b file, and now, well, just let's say queen to b7, and you lose your new queen. And this is completely winning. So, Magnus Carlsen, after this move, king to d6 by Yesipenko, resigned the game. And with this, Magnus Carlsen loses his first rapid game in the World Cup since 2005. So 16 years without losing a single rapid game. And now the score is tied and we're going to the Blitz playoff. So I'm going to make a video on the Blitz playoff, which should be released in a few minutes. All right, that's the game. I hope you enjoyed it. And as usual, like, subscribe, and let me know what you think in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching and have an excellent rest of your day.